And welcome to Carcon Carne. I'm James Van Ossel. Carcon Carne being broadcast from the, the scenic confines of my home office. Carcon Carne will return to the car in the month of November. Plans are underway to return, which is very exciting. You know, I went back in the car, then I went back to doing virtual. We're going to go back in the car and we'll see if that sticks. I, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So that's next month. Tomorrow in the world of podcasting, the music of Chicago, my other podcast, the sister podcast of Carcon Carne debuts with a new episode. They debut every Friday and you can sign up or not sign up. You can subscribe. You can listen on Google and Apple. And in fact, two weeks from tomorrow on the music of Chicago, it'll be a very special Halloween episode, Halloween and Halloween adjacent spooky songs from Chicago musicians debuting on the 29th. I love this time of year. I love horror movies. Uh, seconds before I jumped on tonight, I just finished watching the new VHS movie, VHS 94 on Shudder, which honestly, kind of awesome. One of the vignettes, maybe not so much. The other ones, totally great. I, I really enjoy that. If you're a horror fan, uh, if you don't already have Shudder, I, I'm not sure what you're doing, uh, but that, that's definitely something to watch. And I know for a fact, my guest tonight enjoys horror, and I know that because we've talked about it before. My guest is singer-songwriter Nathan Graham, a mega talent and a returning favorite on the show. Good evening, Nathan. Hey, how's it going? Uh, for those keeping track at home, and if they're keeping track at home, that's kind of weird, uh, but you have been on episode 71, 74, 391, 600, and 671, which is tonight's. You're, you're, you're a frequent flyer, and I love having you on the show. Oh, I didn't know I was on that many episodes. Well, we did the one at the hot dog place. Right. And then you were on uh, my Taste of Chicago show. That's right. And then you did one during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then there was 600, the Night of a Thousand Stars. That's right. Tonight. Yeah. yeah. yeah so this All is right. your fifth time. I mean, here's perspective for you. Tiffany's only been on twice. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've only had Billy Corgan on once. You, Nathan Graham, five times. Oh, okay. Well. See? Uh, here's the funny thing. Uh, I think you're an instantly, instantly recognizable person. I'm pretty sure I drove right past you on the street a couple weekends ago, and I was in a hurry. I'm like, who's that very tall man with the hat walking around with a guitar in the Ravenswood area? I'm like, it can only be one guy, but I had to keep driving. I'm sure that was, uh, yeah. I'm sure it was. I'm yeah. sure. And I didn't want to be weird and like speed over to the, you know, to the curb. Nathan, Nathan, like flag you down. I thought that would, that would have been odd. <laughs> No, it would have would have would have been fine. I would have stopped for you. I drove right by you. I'm like, that's Nathan Graham. And you had a guitar. Like yeah. you probably weren't even going anywhere to play it. You just like walking around with it, just oh yeah. I just it, it's it's sort of like uh I'm I'm sort of like a shogun at this point. I just carry it <laughs> just in case and it, there's like a duel that happens and I could just I could just whip it out. Like something at the crossroads. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mentioned last time. We had time, just the two of us on this podcast was during quarantine. You played I'll Get It Right. You've been, you've been back in the, in the world uh, for the past couple of months doing a lot of shows. You did Shubas recently. Uh, how, does, how does it feel to just kind of be back in the swing of things? It, it's good. Um, I, I mean, it's really weird because, of course, it hasn't gone back to exactly how it was, you know. Right. So it is a little different. Um, but it's nice to see the faces again, you know, so it's nice to be like actually at venues and playing shows and not feeling as if I'm just like playing into my screen and there may be somebody out there watching. There may not be. Um, but it's nice now because I think people have much more of an appreciation for what we're doing and what we have been doing. So now they're kind of like, OK, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to really listen to this because this might get taken away from me in another six months, you know? So for real, I mean, the few live experiences I've had since things have settled down a little bit mm -hmm. uh, have been very emotional. Yeah. It just as a fan, it's been very emotional. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is what I love. I, I'm doing it again. Yeah. We, so I, I, remember, I can't imagine as a musician, how that feels. Oh yeah. It's, I remember the first thing that I did back was Talia Hall. And uh, I remember talking, I was, with uh joe george I, I think you may know him um but he we were sitting backstage and we were like man we didn't know how much we missed like loading in and talking <laughs> backstage yeah. like that's that's a huge part of like getting ready for a show like people don't think that you know it's like all the technical things of like maybe warming up maybe like you know singing through some songs or whatever but like a huge part of getting ready for the show is just like sitting backstage and talking well community 
Yeah. And having that moment to like get into the mindset of playing a show. Like I'm, I'm about to do this, you know? So well, on the show tip, you're coming back or you're going back to Pilsen on the 29th. That's right. And that's, uh, Thalia, Thalia. you said Talia Hall. I've been calling it Thalia Hall. Am I doing this right? I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I've said, I've heard it's pronounced Talia. I've heard it pronounced Thalia. I've heard it pronounced Thalia. So I, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> there needs to be a, there needs to be a, like a, a press release from city hall to just to set everyone straight on this. Exactly. So all, we yeah. need to all be operating from the same playbook. Exactly. It's gotta be that and Worcestershire sauce needs to have like a, <laughs> like a definitive this is how you say this well now that, that's that's clearly worcestershire my my prop my problematic word isn't in the pronunciation chardonnay it's the one word i can't spell without looking at something everyone has that one word that they need to like google to know how to spell i i, yeah. I fuck up chardonnay every time i try to spell it <laughs> is it g-i-a r-d-e any i-r-a I believe so, but I just told you okay. I don't know. Okay. So it's, I, that, that, that's that's my one word. That that's my that's my that's my grammatical kryptonite or something. Yeah. Uh, all right. So Thalia 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 Hall on the 29th, and then space. Right. You're doing. You're going to space in November. Yeah. Um. I man, I I'm playing space, and I'm opening up for the Wallflowers. I didn't know that part of it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember the way that I found out is um, my dad, my dad always asked me about like, anytime I see him or talk to him, he's like, Hey, what's going on with music? Like any new shows, any new gigs, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, not really. And then as we were sitting there talking, I get this email from space and it was like, do you want to open for the wallflowers? I was like, yes, yes. I would <laughs> love to do that. <laughs> what a great gig. And that's a, that's a good match too. I yeah, hopefully. I ho I hope it's a good match. <laughs> I, I think that crowd will totally dig you. I think that's great. And uh what a cool little room to play too. I love I love playing space. And it, I've played space probably three times now, and I'd love it every time I go back. Yeah, and I, I like what they there. did for the like during the during the, the heat of the pandemic, it was like a out of space. So and I play one of those. Yeah, that's awesome. So new song somebody else mm -hmm. this started as a voice memo yeah explain that so it i mean it pretty much all of my songs kind of started as a voice memo of me like humming something into the phone and it's i have like hundreds and hundreds of of uh you know voice memos where it's just like if i die don't delete my browser history <laughs> delete those because those are really bad some of them are just like stupid really bad me melodies and um so yeah it started off as that and i was kind of like playing around with i had the chords i had i had everything that i wanted to you know how the song how i wanted it to be laid out but i didn't really have exactly what i wanted to say in the lyrics and it was more kind of going towards like i didn't want this to just be about okay boy meets girl girl breaks boy's heart you know, it was like, this was my love story to the music industry and being an artist, you know, so it's like having those push pull moments of sadness and hope, you know, and and going back and forth from that. So that was that was my intention for this one. A love story to the music industry. You don't yeah. hear many musicians say, I'm, I'm going to write a song that's a love letter to the music business. Because yeah. Most of them view it as a, a soul sucking, enervating, horrible thing. I, you know what the thing about it is like when you I think at this point, especially musicians now, there have been enough, uh, you know, documentaries that told you about what was going to happen, you know, for you to just know, OK, like I'm getting into this. I know there's going to be some things that I need to fight through, mm -hmm. you know, you just have to kind of have to accept it. And it's like it's part of the struggle and it's and it's upsetting and it's beautiful and it's heart-wrenching and it's just everything it's just like all the, all the things together and it's, you just feel kind of exhausted by it and I wanted to kind of have I mean I personified it as if it was a relationship because it is you know it's yeah. like it is very much you know you and your music and how people 
that can help you get to the next place, see you as an artist. You know, it's like, cause most of the time there are people that do believe in you and do love you. Um, but then there's people that just kind of see you as a dollar sign, you know, it's like how much, you know, it's like, what is your worth in this space, you know? And, um, you kind of have to, you, you kind of have to, to look at it that way as well. You kind of have to look at yourself that way sometimes and be like, you know, I, you know, there's, I love my art and I love doing this, but also, you know, I have to think about myself as they would see me as well. So it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's it's and, definitely hard. And you know how I see you. Yeah. A, sh a Shogun. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Uh, all right, so this song, <laughs> exactly. Just waiting for, for to, to prove yourself or be pressed into battle. Exactly. Uh, no surprise there's a really sweet solo uh, on the song i love your guitar playing Thank and you. there's there's a moment in the song i love you, you basically bring the song to a standstill then you, you build it back up like it just i love structurally what you what you're doing on this new song thank you yeah i that that's something that i've always loved in music uh is that that sort of like that wind up and, mm -hmm. and punch um there's a song it's not even it doesn't even have lyrics but it's a, a song by johnny a called crea gata and the whole song is the sonic embodiment of like a 1950s detective smoking a cigarette going through his notes and then it just kind of like full charge into a fight scene almost and i've always loved that i've always loved that moment of of you're here and then they bring you down here and like, you know, just have that moment of, okay, let's have this moment of silence. And then we're right back into it. I've always loved that music. Totally. So the new song is somebody else. There's a, a lyric video for that. Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. And uh, it, it's available on all the streamers. Mm -hmm. There is an album on the way. That's right. Tell me about that. So the album is done, uh, done and mixed and everything. So that's, that's great. Um, I am so still we're we're kind of working with uh, Tom and I are, are working with, you know, with different people trying to figure out if we can, you know, yeah, Tom, Tom is your manager for people yeah. who don't know. That's right. Yeah, Tom, uh, Tom Schmall. Um, so we're just trying to, you know, work on deals and, and everything and, you know, make sure it's the right one and make sure it's a good one. <laughs> um, you know, as, as much as I am a new artist, it's like, you know, I, I do sort of want to try to make this a good thing. So um, that's that's our plan for that. See, and I wonder, this is a bigger conversation than we have the time or energy for uh, mm -hmm. on this podcast, but I, I feel like the music industry being in the, posi in the position it's in right now, I feel like artists are more in the driver's seat than they've ever been. Because an artist can walk away from a deal and still achieve some modicum of success. Whereas back in the 90s, it was kind of like an all or nothing proposition. Yeah. And it's stuff be, like, yeah, it's stuff like this. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, you can be a self-sustaining musician for a while without, you know, a Sony or a whatever behind you. Yeah. I mean, look at, look, there's a guy named Eric Roberson that is really good. And he is a soul singer and he's got like, I mean, he, he goes to city winery. He sells out three, four nights, but never record label or anything like that. And, um, and he's, you know, he, he's doing pretty well, but I think it's, it is the internet that really can that helps out you know it's like i can reach two people that are four thousand miles away from me which you is know, the coolest without, exactly so i mean th that's the thing is like it's it's still a push pull it's still like you know you you want to you do want a record label you do want a, a manager an agent and all that stuff because that does make your life easier yeah, um, because because the creative the creative side of the brain yeah. and the business side of the brain don't always work in concert with one another. Sometimes it's yeah. just easier to. I, I just want to be creative today. Can you please just help me book somebody some do this? Yeah, neg negotiate this shit for me. I I don't want to. Yeah, it's like I don't I don't even know what that's I don't even know what the, that sentence means right there. You know, so it's like somebody <laughs> tell me what the hell that sentence means, and then we'll we'll go from there. Um, I, I, that's the thing is like, I've always had to do it. So I, my brain is still very wired to the business side of it and kind of being like, okay, what is that? You know, how much am I going to for that? What is that? What does this mean? 
Like, you, you know, if I don't understand something, I will kind of go break that down for late in layman's terms for me. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that mean? Not lawyer speak, you know? Right. So um, it, it's that that's, you know, that's the thing is like for artists that don't really know that side or don't really want to deal with that side, a lot of a lot of record labels will help them in that in that sense. Um, but the people who are very, very business savvy, I would say like, you know, like a Vic Menza, you know, like mm-hmm. he's no, he knows exactly what's going on in every part of his every part of his business. He knows exactly what's happening uh, at any given time. So it's like somebody like him, it's like he could essentially do it without a label and be just fine. For sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So th- that's on the way. And I'm no manager. I'm no expert on this, but I think you take whatever deal that's on the table where they're going to press up a bunch of vinyl for you. Just make, <laughs> sure you. just make sure you get this album pressed on vinyl. You are the probably the 12th person. Stop it. <laughs> To really? ask you about that yeah the, uh, man i did another podcast called the underground sessions and I, I, that guy hits me up daily almost and just says like hey man you got that you got that song press the vinyl yet <laughs> it's like no i, I don't um, it's a, it's I a sickness love... it's because yeah. the people asking we, we, we all suffer from a sickness at this point I know. It's, it's an obsessive it's an obsessive thing it, it consumes us somebody asked me uh should i get into vinyl and it was sort of like, you ever seen Dewey Cox, the Dewey Cox story? Of course. When he goes like, you don't want no part of this shit. That's sort of how I felt. <laughs> it was like, you don't want a part of this. Like, you don't want to be in, like, yes, it's it's beautiful and it's great. But also you were driving yourself nuts looking for certain records and wanting, you know, like, you know, you'll be scouring discogs at like three in the morning, like, oh man, you know, finally I found this album and now you got to wait from like, there's this weird imprint from Germany that you paid $80 for that you're hoping that gets here and not damaged. It's, a, it's such a problem. <laughs> it is. I, I went to the uh, record convention that they do in, in Hillside at the, at the Holiday Inn out mm-hmm. there. Basically it's like a bunch of old, like 55 year old bearded white dudes selling Pablo Cruz records. But I was there before the, they opened at like 4.30 in the morning like yeah. waiting to get first crack at the records and was looking around. I'm like, seriously, what am I doing here? What, what, what's become of me? What, what's, <laughs> why can't I throttle back on this? Hey, am, right. I, am, am I too far gone now? It's like train spotting when he like sees the baby and he's just like, I got to change my life. You know, <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So, all right, let's go back to you being a Shogun. Uh, tell me about your favorite guitar. Uh, favorite guitar? Oh man. Um, well, I, I made a, a pandemic purchase, um, as, as everybody did. <laughs> it was a, um, so my favorite guitar has always been an ES-330. Uh, it's so much so that I actually have one tattooed on me. Um, and so I finally got my hands on a Gibson ES-330. And it was one of those things where I saw it on Reverb and it was in, it was at Chicago Music Exchange and I was kind of like, Okay, well, I got the stimulus check. <laughs> it's like, can I can I do this? Can I like, I don't know. And so I, I was just like, you know what? There's no way that I'm gonna have this opportunity again. It's in the color that I wanted. It's you know, it's like a um, a limited edition color. So it was like it was in the color I wanted. It was in the right price point. And I was like, there's no way that I'm ever gonna get this opportunity again i might as well just go ahead and do it so that's been the guitar that i've been playing for a long time i love it and that to me and that's just that's just self-care yeah i mean none of us were convinced we were going to make it to 2021 there for a while so you got the yeah. money you, you stimulated some local business you stimulated yourself it all makes sense to me yeah it's, it was that moment of just like well you know the devil could come down the street tomorrow so yeah screw it i'm gonna be glad about this guitar <laughs> and if the devil comes down the street to the crossroads damn it all you'll be ready exactly exactly (laughs) all right so the new song nathan graham is uh it's available now again anywhere you stream music you can get it it's somebody else we can see you at thalia hall in scenic pilsen on the 29th and then space opening up for the freaking wallflowers yeah in november not a bad way to kind of wind down the year yeah it's uh it, it there's there's quite a bit of a bit going on oh and december 15th i'm playing uh at Sleeping Village 
with uh, a new band called the Nets. Um, they're uh, three women, gorgeous harmonies. Um, yeah, actually, well, you, you, our friend Christina Catoni is in it. A, a mega talented musician, yeah, performer exactly. in her own right. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. They, they might be hard to Google, though. That's my only concern. Uh, yeah, for right now, they are hard to Google, uh, but they just did a podcast, uh, the Underground Sessions, and they came out with four videos, so you can check that out, too. So Fantastic. No, she's she's a mega talent. That's awesome news. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's Sleeping Village in December. Uh, mm-hmm. I love your stuff. I always have. I, I don't see you as a dollar sign. I just see you as a, an artist I love. Thank you. So I, I, I always appreciate having you on the show. Yeah, me too, man. Thanks a lot. All right, that's Nathan Graham. Go support him. Go see him. Go listen to him. In fact, when you're done watching or listening, go go pull that song up. And uh, it's just, it's just awesome. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's bluesy. It's soulful. It's, I, lo- I love everything about it. Thank you.